Welcome to the CFA Connections how-to tutorial on serving tea. In this tutorial we'll be discussing the various types of teas, the service tools required for a proper tea service, how to present your tea selections, all of the accompaniments such as sugar, milk, honey, and lemon, preparing the tea, serving the tea, and what we call plain talk which features commentary or discussions by other corporate flight attendants. In this tutorial, I'm joined by British corporate flight attendant Andy Scott. He and I will discuss our preferences for serving tea for our clients on board business jets. Did you know there are over 3,000 varieties of tea, each with its own characteristics? <laughs> That's a lot. The most popular types of tea are white, green, oolong, black, and herbal. And we'll briefly go through each of these. The first is white tea. White tea is known to be one of the most delicate tea varieties because it is so minimally processed. White tea is harvested before the tea plant's leaves fully open when the young buds are still covered by fine white hairs, hence the name white tea. White tea also has several health benefits, including numerous antioxidants that can help boost cardiovascular health, lower bad cholesterol levels, and manage healthy weight loss. Green tea originated in China and is typically a lighter green, yellow, or light brown in color. However, not all green tea tastes the same, even though it all comes from the same plant variety. The flavor profiles can range vastly because the leaves can be roasted, pan-fired or steamed, creating a vegetal, sweet, seaweed-like to citrus-like flavors. It's known to have enormous health benefits, such as high in antioxidants. Oolong tea means black dragon in Chinese because of the dark tea leaves. However, it's neither a black tea nor a green tea and it falls into its own category. Oolong may take on a more black tea or a more green tea characteristics depending on the direction the tea master takes in the processing. It is semi-fermented whereas black tea is fully fermented. Oolong tea was first created in China and Taiwan where the oolong tea leaves are oxidized and then fired. It has a wide range of flavors with distinctive tastes and fragrances. It is known to improve mental alertness and thinking skills and has plenty of antioxidants that may boost your metabolism by up to 10%. Black tea is the most popular type of tea in the world. Generally when you say tea in Western culture, it refers to black tea. Sun tea, sweet tea, iced tea, afternoon tea, all of these well-known categories of tea are typically made using black tea. The most popular black teas are English breakfast, Earl Grey, and Darjeeling. It is more oxidized than oolong, white, or green teas and is generally stronger in flavor. Herbal teas such as chamomile, peppermint, ginger, and rose tea, despite their names, herbal teas are not true teas at all. True teas such as green tea, black tea, and oolong tea are all brewed from the leaves of the chamomilla sinensis plant. Herbal teas are made from dried fruits, flowers, spices, or herbs. Tea comes in basically two forms, bagged and loose leaf, and the bag shapes and sizes also vary. The majority of business jets will stock the standard tea bag, however, the brands, varieties, and flavors on board are often endless. Keep in mind there also may be decaf flavors as well. This is why we recommend, if you're unfamiliar with the aircraft, to always inventory the tea selections during your pre-flight so you are aware of what you have to offer to your clients. There may be a tea display box to present to the clients, or the teas may be stocked in a drawer or storage container. In this case, you can simply present the choices neatly displayed on a serving tray. Or perhaps you have or can create a menu showcasing the tea selections. The menu option is always a nice wow factor item. Do you know which of these two cups and saucer sets, which one is the teacup and which one is the coffee cup? Did you know there's actually a difference? The teacup is typically a tapered shape and the coffee cup is typically straight up. Teacups are designed to be elegant 
held lightly and cool the liquid quickly, yes. And coffee cups are designed to be cupped in the hand and stay warm. If the teacup has handles, you're to hold the teacup delicately between the thumb and one or two fingers, which does not leave much space for a great grip. For this reason, most teacups have small, single-fingered handles. On the other hand, the handles of a coffee cup are bigger and can usually accommodate three to four fingers easily and are stronger since one must be able to hold a heavy cup filled with the hot beverage. That being said, most business jets these days are only equipped with mugs due to limited storage options. So all of the tea aficionados, <laughs> exactly, not happy. Let's talk about the service tools you should have on board to provide a proper or at least as close to a proper tea service in flight. You need a cup and saucer or mug as mentioned, a tea service set, which includes a teapot, creamer, and sugar, and we'll talk more about this later, hot water using a microwave or a hot pot, a teaspoon, a serving tray and liner, a beverage napkin, and what we call a used tea bag catch or caddy, and we'll also discuss this later. The accompaniments needed are sugar, and a proper tea service uses sugar cubes, not packets, milk, not cream is preferred for tea, lemon, honey, and it's always a nice touch to include a small biscuit, also known as a cookie. When it comes to preparing and serving tea, this becomes very subjective. While in flight, you may prepare the tea entirely in the galley for your client, or the client may prefer that you serve everything a la carte so they can prepare it themselves to their liking or you may brew and serve the tea with all the accompaniments on the side. It also depends on if you have a tea service pot or if you're serving it in a cup or a mug. There are recommended brewing times for all the various teas as the steeping times differ based on the type of tea. And again, this is also all based on preferences. Some people prefer their tea lighter, others stronger so the tea bag may or may not be removed after steeping. The more oxidized your tea, the stronger it is. Black tea is fully oxidized, which means it prefers near boiling water and a longer brewing time. The same goes for oolong. In this case, it's best to allow your freshly boiled water to cool for about a minute, then pour the hot water and allow the tea to steep for up to three minutes. But again, this is according to taste. Milder teas, such as green and white, prefer milder temperatures and shorter brewing times. This means after boiling, let the water cool down for a few minutes to around 175 Fahrenheit, 80 Celsius, before pouring. Then let the tea steep for just a couple of minutes. As mentioned, an individual's tea service preferences can vary and vary perhaps daily. They may prefer to make it themselves, they may prefer the tea bag left in the cup, they may prefer the tea bag removed, they may prefer it in a teapot. This is why it's completely appropriate and actually recommended to simply ask the client how they prefer their tea to be brewed and served. Not forgetting to inquire if they take milk, sugar, lemon, or honey.
if I were ever to use loose tea, um, it would probably be just a standard pot, but then with the, the separate tea strainer that you pour through, as in the very, very old fashioned traditional way of serving loose leaf tea. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a, it, it comes back to the, you know, the grand hotel afternoon tea type of way of doing things. Um, and certainly for, for, you know, my, my principal and, and, and things that's, that's what they like. They like the traditional aspect of service and, and things like that. So it's, it's, it's how I would probably do it if we were to use loose leaf tea, but we do use tea bags. Um, so it is a lot easier. Yeah. And, but you use the tea bags in the teapot. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah. you, you steep the, the tea bags in the pot and then re once it's steeped you remove the tea bags nope um so pot. leave them in the pot uh so we um we we do a, a tea tray so we we do a, a, a traditional style tea tray which has the um i mean we, we mainly serve english breakfast tea um as opposed to herbal teas we, we do carry herbal teas obviously um and we also do those in the pot as well um but you know, so we set up the tray with uh, with the the cream cream slash milk jug, whatever you're wanting, uh, sugar, um, the teapot and the teacup, um, and as soon as you we've poured the water into the teapot, it then goes into the cabin, um, and it's for the passenger to then decide how long they want. So it's similar to the cup idea, um, you know, and you just say it's it's we've we've just poured the water in, so they know okay, I'll leave it for two minutes or I'll if they want very weak tea they'll they'll do it now um and it gives them that choice um and if they want to remove the tea bag they can majority of the time they leave it in because they have the option of removing the tea bags from the pot mm -hmm. and so do you um with the lid are the the tabs of the tea bags hanging out or do they have to scoop them out of the pot no so all, all of the tea bags we use are have the the tags on um, so we leave the tag out so they can either fully remove it or they can just pull it and then tie it around the, the handle. Um, okay. So here's the side note, because that's what I do even at home. Cause I usually make tea in a mug and I'll tie the bag on the handle so it doesn't fall in, but then doing all the research, everyone was like, you only steep at maximum five minutes and you always remove the bag. And I'm like, there are people that leave the bag in mm -hmm. and never yep. remove it from the pot or the cup. So, cause it's very subjective, I think. It, it is. It uh, well, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's same same with coffee. Everybody likes their coffee, and now we're talking about tea a very different way. And yes, the the English or the British are very much tea drinkers. But you could walk into any house in the UK and offer somebody tea, and you know there's there's an absolute myriad of different ways of making a cup of tea. Uh, so it'll never be agreed on. Because I've seen that where they want to make the tea themselves, and then there's no ramekin or a dish for them to put the tea bag in and then they set it on their napkin and I'm just like and it's one that I'd have to reach across them to get it to replace it or the cup is on the napkin and it's just this wet mess I'm like oh it's driving me crazy <laughs> which is which is one of the, the the benefits that I see and I do see the benefits of the you know the I'm going to call it the American way of doing it um that you do have the the little ramekin or the the espresso saucer that you can put something on um, so I, I, I see the benefit of that. Um, but you know, it's well, I, I think that also if it's a mug, cause I'm finding, I'm finding and seeing that more and more aircraft have mugs versus cups and saucers, yes. tea and coffee. They'll have the cup and saucer for the espresso, but you have the mug where if it's a saucer, you would be able to put the used tea bag on the saucer because mm -hmm. most of them are wide enough. And some are actually are big saucers and odd shape, like oblong shapes for like a side you know with a biscuit cookie or something too but where you could put the used tea bag so you'd have a place to just you know discard it um and because if you know if if it's just on the aircraft and it's a sidewall and it's in the cup holder that's you know where they're going to put the tea bag if it's on yeah. the table it's a placemat depending on the type of placemat it's a fabric tape placemat you'll want them setting it on there mm -hmm. so that's why I usually always have a little side dish um, yeah. and I'll tell them it's for the, the used tea bag to place it. So, so when they're done, I can remove that. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it just, it, it tidies up the area. So it doesn't let like there's, there's things sitting around. Um, 
But you, you, that is a very good point. And, you know, our, our new aircraft came just with mugs. Um, and similar to what you've just said, yes, we got the espresso um, cups and saucers, uh, but we just had mugs. Um, and I actually purchased um, some teacups and saucers uh, because I'm British and I want teacups <laughs> and saucers on the plane. Um, yeah. And I have to say they actually get used a lot um, because, again, the, the principal and some of the passengers prefer it from a teacup, not from a mug. Um, the the aircraft, which is currently in maintenance, um, we're renewing the um, the CCF on board. Um, and I've, I've made that a conscious choice that within the items which I've asked for um, to be purchased for the aircraft, we've purchased um, matching uh, teacups and saucers. Um, again, because I, I think it looks better if you're serving especially a traditional style of tea, um, a traditional black tea served the way we serve it. It, it looks better in a teacup and saucer. Um, mugs have their place and, and, you know, you can do a lot with a mug, but that is, I, I sort of draw the line at uh, English breakfast tea in a mug, unless it's me at home. So. I, want, I want to ask, you know, a Brit, exactly, because from my training and experience, there's, the proper slice of lemon for tea. And there's also the proper time to put it in the tea. And mm -hmm. I was always trained that it should be a, a wheel, a thin wheel of lemon. So it's the round, the full yes. round. And you put it in once the tea is brewed, not before, because if you pour the hot water in with the lemon in it already, it opens up the lemon too much. So if they want hot water with lemon, perfect. But tea, the lemon goes in after the tea is in the Yes, that is that is that is how I've always been told to do it. Should be a full, and I, th I think you, you you hit it on the head as well. It should be a thin slice of lemon, not a not a, a, a like half a lemon in one slice. Um, so a very a thin slice of lemon, and it should be placed into the tea once it's been once it's brewed and been poured into the cup. Yeah, and and I know um, you know sometimes lemons can be quite large, and that's what you get. So if it's if the round is too big or that takes up too much of the cup. Then a half of uh, you know, yes. half moon, I guess, um, as long as it's in, it would be then the second option, plan B. Absolutely, yeah. And I tend to, if I'm slicing lemon for tea, um, I would I would always slice both. So I would slice a full, a full. let's just call them moons. I'd slice a full moon, um, put a couple of slices of full moon size lemon, and then a couple of half slices, um, just to give them the option. Um, Even the option if you're yeah. serving that on the side. Mm, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would never put anything in the tea. Um, so if I was serving tea, everything to go with the tea would be served on the side. So whether that be uh, milk, sugar, honey, lemon, it would all be separate on the side so they can make their own choice and, and, and put whatever they want in their tea. And even if you know how they take it, you still just give them the accompaniments to do it themselves. Is and and I, you know, I've learned probably from um, from experience and and from my from from myself. You know, some days I I want tea with a bit more milk in, and then other days I don't want the tea bag in that long, but then I want barely any milk in the tea. So. It's, it's such a variable taste depending on your mood, if it's in the morning, if it's in the evening, you know, if you're having it straight after dinner or if you're just having a cup of tea by itself. Um, so I, I always, I've always done it so people um, can make their own tea as to how they like it at that precise moment. That is so brilliant. I'm so glad you said that because um, I'm, I totally agree. So <laughs> at least, and at least if, if they have all of the accompaniments there, if, say, for example, they, they put the milk in the tea and then they taste it and go, actually, I need a little bit more milk, they don't then have to summon you back and say, oh, can I have a drop more milk in my tea? They can easily do that, easily remedy that themselves and carry on with whatever they're doing without us taking it away, bringing it back. And if it, sugar, do you just do packets? Is that fine on the aircraft? Are you, yeah, right? It's sugar cubes, correct? Yeah, you do just white sugar cubes, or you do have the natural ones too. Right? Yeah, um, so we have uh, square white sugar cubes and the the natural um, brown sugar, um, and I mean they're just mixed together in the sugar bowl. But you know, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I. Yeah. I'm with yeah, you. Sugar packets are, are a no no. Yeah. I mean, that's the ease. That's what's on the most planes. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have your dedicated aircraft, so you can stock it. Most corporate jets, charter jets, would just have yeah. sugar packets. So if you, these are like the add ons, whether in your toolkit that you carry, sugar cubes, because if you're that passionate about, proper service of tea, you would have the two choices of sugar cubes, yeah. um, with the natural raw, what have you, however they refer to it, um, the brown sugar cube versus the white processed sugar. Yes. Mm. In closing, always take note on how your client preferred their tea and document on the preference list. However, don't assume and just make their tea for them the next time you see them. As Andy brilliantly pointed out, how they prefer their tea may vary with the time of day or mood. I know I'm the same way. You can still offer their tea how they previously enjoyed it, such as with light milk and one sugar cube. Regardless if they want their tea the same way as before or different, this simple little gesture shows them that you paid attention and remembered how they take their tea despite how much time has passed since she last flew them.